Thank Welcome you. back. Well, with us right now is the head of security services, Tim Moy. Always good to see you, good sir. To see you, Ken. And uh, we were commenting, this gentleman, you can see he sands glasses now. That's so isn't right. that nice? Yeah, I just had surgery, had my uh, natural lens removed and put in some artificial ones. It's, it was the same type of surgery that's done with uh, the cataracts. Yeah, exactly. Well. Very nice. Yeah. You know? Pretty are you, are you missing the glasses or not? I do not. Yeah. I do not miss the glasses. <laughs> One day I'll get rid of there these. I'm hoping for it. Now, you know, over the last um, well, several months, when you've been giving your reports, you've often mm -hmm. talked about how helpful the residents can be. Right. And what I said, you know, nabbing the criminals, nabbing the bad guys, and of course they work with security and then the right. sheriff's department. Sure. So today we're this is what we're gonna talk about, calling in suspicious behavior, and then also policy violations, totally different things, right? right? Correct. And it's when to call security, when to call mm -hmm. the sheriffs. And uh, once again, uh, we see that, as I was saying, a resident is recently helpful and in providing information so a suspect could be apprehended, right? Right, this, uh, this occurred on the morning of uh, July 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, a resident walked outside uh, of her, her manor into her uh, patio area and noticed a, a utility wagon missing. And within a minute or two, she saw an individual walking with her utility wagon and had loaded the wagon with what was most likely other stolen property. And, and just walking through the walking community. in the wow. in yeah in the morning and wow. in broad daylight exactly and this she was alert to it. Um, we always recommend that you maintain your distance mm -hmm. uh, and give the give the sheriff a call. That's yeah. a cr that's a crime yeah. in progress. Yeah, and and security will be notified as well. We'll, we'll be responding, um, but in any event, she she made the decision to actually confront him. And uh, he, he tried to give her a story and said, oh, your neighbor uh, let me borrow it, which we know is, is not right. the truth. Um, and then we were able to get out there and, and take action. And, you, you know, you, you mentioned how just walking through in the morning with that, and it, she was alert enough to figure that out because a lot of people, it becomes so obvious they don't think much of it. They, they would just go, oh, there's somebody walking down the street right. with this wagon and there's stuff in it. And sure. That is that. You but know? even that, you know, this, this individual is a little bit younger. Yeah. And um, it should not be, you know, it needs to be escorted by a member right. or, or a, a permanent resident here and, and was not. And so we, we recommend that if something looks out of the ordinary and our residents, of course, they know the neighborhood better mm -hmm. than we do. Yeah. They're the eyes, they are the ears. And all we ask is, hey, give us a call in those types of situations. Right. And based on the circumstances, you may call security or you may call the sheriff's department. And that's, that's a great conversation for us to you know, nail down on. Yeah, and here's something again, we're gonna move on to that. When is appropriate to call the sheriff's department and when security, our, our own security right, here. Right, right. And sometimes people may be confused. Certainly, when it comes to policy violations, you'd be sure. calling security. Right, so you've got some clutter violations yeah. going on. You may have a, a, a small neighborhood dispute reference a rules and regs. Right. We're gonna go uh, respond on that. Maybe it's a, a construction mm -hmm. uh, worker who's working past the, the, right. the, the five o'clock hour. We'll roll on those things. On a, on a case like this, you've got a, 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 what we believe was a crime in progress. Mm -hmm. And the sheriff's department is, they have the tools, they have right. the resources to handle those things. If it's a, in a medical emergency, uh, you need to dial 911, exactly. do it. Yeah. If it's, if, but I will say that even if it is a suspicious person and you just don't feel comfortable with it, and the resident chooses to, to call the sheriff's department, the sheriff's department's gonna respond. Mm -hmm. And they will coordinate with security so they as will. well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So the sheriff's department and our security uh, dispatch has a great relationship. They have each other's numbers. So when, when the sheriff may be rolling on something mm -hmm. and maybe it's an extended delay and it's not that um, big of an urgent matter, they'll notify uh, security and security will start heading out that way. So there's, there's good communication there. So we, we recommend that, hey, one, you make a call. And if it is an emergency, call the sheriff. If there's a crime in progress, call the sheriff. Not that many of those happen, Ken, in here. It's a very right. safe community. Um, if there's a doubt and, and you want to call security first, security is going to, um, uh, they'll contact the sheriff's department for you. Many times while we're rolling out there on something, a uh, supervisor will get on the radio and say, hey, let's, let's get the sheriffs out here as well. Okay. So you're going to get that. They're going to assess the, assist, the, they are. the situation. Right. 
Now, there are times, as you mentioned in uh, this particular incident, you don't know if the suspect is dangerous. I mean, that suspect, uh, you know, could have right. all of a sudden attacked that person sure. or maybe had a weapon on him. You don't know. Right. Uh, that wasn't the case. But as yeah. you said, if you feel something is really amiss, keep your distance, Correct. watch and call. Exactly. Observe and report. Yeah. Right. Keep your distance. And, and you know, we, we do have individuals who maybe have a mental illness. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of our transient population, we, we've seen right. that quite a bit. There may be some uh, prior drug usage mm -hmm. as well. And uh, those individuals tend to be agitated and, and somewhat unstable and unpredictable. So don't take a chance. We'll go out there. We'll handle that for you. Okay. Yeah, that, a very good tip. And that's true whether you live here or uh, somewhere else. Right, anything you might observe, yeah. um, we, we recommend. You use your first responders. That's what they're paid to do. And if you see something, I th we've got a lot of Good Samaritans, and we appreciate yeah. that, but uh, we don't want to put our, our residents in risk. Exactly. Either. Now, here is something that people ask all the time. We've seen this in the meetings. We got a gated community here, a private community. How do these individuals get in? Sure. Well. You know, you have explained this before. This is not a fortress. Correct. And people can either get in, uh, you know, through over the fences in certain areas or if they're very, very determined. Mm -hmm. But often, as we have seen recently, they may know a member of the community or be a relative. Am I right? You are correct. So there are times where we have what's called gate runners that mm -hmm. are able to slip by mm -hmm. our ambassadors. And as you know, when those gate arms go up, that's not going to be the case anymore. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to just zip by right. ambassadors. Right. But hey, we've got about 18,000 residents here. And then those residents have the opportunity to um, hand out those, those permanent passes, mm -hmm. those five guest passes. We don't know who those people are. Uh, we've had recent incidents where there's some minor crimes that have occurred in here by those types of guests. So mm -hmm. when they come through, they are actually actually have a legitimate pass. One of the, the, the advantages of having that is when, and if they do get caught, and that, that was the case just recently, where we are now assisting the sheriff's department with their investigation because we were able to identify a person who had a pass mm -hmm. and then committed a, a minor theft. But we are able to uh, work with the sheriff's department and let them know this is when this person came in. Um, and we are able to give them a vehicle description, a time, and it basically uh, allows them to narrow down when the crime actually occurred. And so they're yeah. able to work that community. That and as more of the gates get uh, redone and get the cameras on them and technology uh, goes throughout the community, this is only going to be a much better tool right. for, for you folks in keeping people safer here. Absolutely. So on those types of situations, not only will we be able to record when they came in, mm -hmm. because of our cameras, we'll be able to show when they went out. And so we'll be That's able to a pinpoint very good point. Yeah. when that crime occurred. So yeah. you know, rather than I went to bed at 9 o'clock, I came out at 8 a.m. and I, I saw something removed from my carport, we can say, no, th these are the individuals, if they were identified, they came in at 10.30. They left at 11.15, it kind of narrows down the, the, the time where the crime occurred, and that is helpful for investigators. Yeah, it's very helpful. Right. Uh, another concern residents have, uh, and it, it may be just because we seem to report on this a little bit more, is crime becoming more of a problem here in uh, Laguna Woods Village? No, it's, it's not. Uh, I would say crime, it's, it's, crime is very low here. This is a very safe community. What we have done is got the word out, though. Yes. People are, are more likely yeah. to report it. We've been very proactive mm -hmm. so that if, if something is seen, people are, are reporting. In the past, maybe they just, uh, they just let it go. They, they observe the fact that you know, maybe something was taken, a bicycle was stolen, and they just count mm -hmm. it as a loss. Now we're saying, no, we, we want this information in and we want you to report it to us and the Sheriff's Department, and we've facilitated that as well. Overall, very safe community. So safe that a, a recent report came out by a group called SafeWise Report, mm -hmm. and they found, based on their study, and they look at crime stats, what have you, that L Laguna Woods is the fourth safest city in the state of California. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's outstanding, I, which, is, which is great to hear. So even though I may speak to some minor issues that have occurred in here and some minor thefts, we don't have the, the crimes of violence. We don't have the breaking and entering of, of man. Right. We don't see right. people being assaulted. What we do see is a, a theft here and there. Um, uh, somebody comes in maybe with bolt cutters and takes a bicycle from um, 
a carport or they may rummage through an unsecure vehicle, which yeah, I we've would, talked about it. Yeah. Right, I would prefer those yeah. vehicles be locked, Ken, as you know. Yeah, you know? I think people living inside the gates here, and I also think this is probably true in other gated communities, even places like uh, like like Coto or Dove Canyon. Right. That well, I don't need to lock my car. We're in a gated community. Right. Hide it, lock it, or lose yeah, it. It's and, a, and yeah. because you know that's a crime yeah. of opportunity. If people <laughs> see something that's unsecured, uh, they they may decide. You know, I'm looking around. No one's around. I'll grab that. Versus when it's locked, uh, people are going to think twice. And now they've mm -hmm. got to take that extra effort. And there's a potential for noise. Or there's a pen potential, more of a potential for someone seeing it. More potential for leaving evidence, DNA behind. Less likely to break in. So we ask our folks, right. take those few extra steps. A few seconds, lock up your, your stuff. Or if you can, if it doesn't lock, then hide it. Well, I know just in our community up in uh, RSM, I think it was more uh, last year, there were a lot of thefts out of vehicles. And I want to say 95% from what at least the mm -hmm. police blotter reports that sure. came out, the vehicles were unlocked. None right. of them that I recall were actually broken into where a window was broken. Right. Maybe one or two out sure. of, you know, there was a lot. There was like 30 or 40 that were happening. Right. Uh, and I, I will tell you that Rancho is a very safe community as well. It, it made that report. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard that. Right. So, uh, hey, Crime occurs. It doesn't yes. matter where you live. Yeah, it does. Um, but to just take those few extra steps to try to make the effort. I, you know, some of us get in a rush. We we get focused on mm -hmm. other things. We we feel safe here, and I think we are safe. But w everyone still needs to do their part. Yeah. I, I will good tell point. you that. I will tell you one other thing. Our, you know, I want to encourage our building captains, our good neighbor building captains, who are doing a great job keeping their communities or their neighborhoods safe, and they they stay on top of their buildings. They've made that extra effort. They are also some great eyes and ears for us. I'd, I'd like to encourage them. We, mm -hmm. we need more building captains. We more, need more good neighbor building captains to step forward and say, I'll be the voice of our, our building. I will be that conduit to reach out to uh, security or maintenance, what have you. Love to have more of them come forward. Love to work with them. Yeah, they do a great work. And uh, I know uh, the Disaster Preparedness Task Force is still kind of ongoing, but right. you know, a few months back we were meeting and a lot of new plans have been put into place if there right. is uh, hopefully not but uh, some sort of major disaster right. right the role that they play is critical as well if, if first responders are delayed if it's a major catastrophe we're asking our good neighbor building captains to check on the building mm -hmm. the, the the structural soundness check on their neighbors and then report that in we're not asking them to do any first aid or anything like that and put themselves at risk but we just need that 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 real-time information to report back so that right. we at the Emergency Operations Center can then strategize and prioritize um, our response. Yeah, that's how important that is. Exactly. Uh, I want to give uh, the number to um, the watch commander, 5974257. Is that the number to call in if you that's, have a problem? That's the watch commander. If that's the okay. watch commander, if, if, if you feel like the service has not been oh, up to okay. standard, All right. but the 580-1400 okay. is going to get dispatch. Okay. If for whatever reason... I had reason, both numbers yeah. and I wasn't quite sure which one to say, but... You know what, if you call either one, the watch commander's going to take the call, he may pass it off to dispatch and say okay. we'll have an officer come out. But if you're unsatisfied with the level of service that you receive, we ask you to call our watch commander and make a complaint and we'll take care of it from there. All right, Tim will take care of it. That's right, Trust we will. All Thank right. you, sir. Thanks, Good to Tim. see you again see and you. Uh, we'll be right back. There you go. Yeah, that'll be nice one. Ray and I are standing in front of a digital sign that, that we hope serves as a deterrent against speeding vehicles and, and also uh, just to make our residents uh, aware of their speed wherever they may be. We, we try to position these uh, throughout our community uh, around curves, um, in downhill sections, and, and again, just to, to remind our folks to, to take it easy, to watch the posted speed limit. And, and as you can see here on this one, the the posted speed limit is uh, 25 miles an hour. And Ray, I'm sure that you, you see quite a few uh, speeding violations uh, in your traffic hearings. Uh, absolutely. We, get pit, we have an average of like 14 people in the morning and they come in for traffic, and at least three of the 14 are there for speeding. There was a 
uh, speeding vehicle, I believe, uh, driving 37 in a 25, which is excessive. Now, this was a straightaway, but and that that is unsafe. Uh, just add the additional conditions of maybe it's it's dark out, the poor lighting, uh, the roadways are, are wet, you're on a curb, you're coming downhill, there's pedestrians out. There's a variety of, of issues that uh, we need to take into consideration of. Bottom line is, let's, let's take it nice and slow. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Again, know your limitations. Um, when, you're, when you're driving fast, you need to be uh, recognized that your ability to brake is going to be severely impacted as well.